For today's tutorial, we're continuing with the Polar Express composition, and today's video is going to be part two of the three-part series. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome everyone to another Blended Graphics tutorial. I'm Jason Ortega and today's video, as mentioned before, we are continuing with this Polar Express composition. If you missed part one, which was aired yesterday, I highly recommend you to go back and check it out because it's going to set us up for today's video, which is going to be part two. And for the second part, we are going to focus on just the sky. We're going to add in a lot of cool space images like galaxies and nebulas and cosmic dust and all of these wonderful images that have these really cool effects and we're going to use those to make our sky look very majestic and out of this world. So let's stop talking and let's get to creating. All right, folks, here's where we left off yesterday. And the first thing I want to do is I just want to move the moon over to the right just a little bit so we have a little bit more space between that and the edge of our picture here. OK, now we can go into our nebulous folder. And in here we have a lot of cool uh, different space images that we're going to use for our sky. So this first one we'll turn on and bring up to the top and just move it somewhere up here. I think will be good for us. All right. And now I want to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer and clip it below. And let's just mess around with the hue and find something that looks good as well as the saturation. So let's just play with these angers to something I think that looks kind of good for the mood of our picture here. OK. From here, let's add a levels adjustment layer and we're just going to increase the contrast a bit. So we'll boost up the highlights as well as the shadows. OK, and now we can go and add a selective color adjustment. So let's see, do I want to go to blues or science? I'll just stick with the blues for right now. Um, and from here, just because the majority of that is blues, we're just going to play around with some of these anchors and see if we can get a little inspiration uh, behind some colors here. I like the look of the blue, but I want something maybe a little bit on the lighter side. So let's see if we can find something that gets us closer to that. This looks pretty good. Um, you know what? I'm going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer on top of this as well. And let's see if we can just tweak the saturation a bit. Maybe decrease it. Now we, that's too saturated. So maybe just desaturate it just a little bit. And let's see how that looks before and after. So that's getting closer to what I'm looking for. Maybe I'll just decrease it just a bit more. And I don't want that edge to be too desaturated, so I'm just going to paint black on that layer mask and bring some of that color back in. OK. And now let's go ahead and add a color balance adjustment layer on top of this and see if we can maybe play around with some of these anchors and sliders to help us out a bit. It's hard to make certain adjustments when you're not 100 percent sure what the look you're going for. I'm hoping we just kind of have a happy accident here and I will eventually just know uh, once we see it. Um, I think this will do for right now. Uh, let's go ahead and highlight all of these layers here. And then Command G, let's group this first nebula together. And since we did that, let's press Command J and make a duplicate of this. And then we're going to right click, convert this to a smart object. And our first group will just kind of act as a backup. So we'll have this image here that we can use if we want to make more adjustments. I also duplicated that layer and then merged those two together by pressing Command E. And what that did for me was it just kind of made this nebula just pop out just a little bit more and just be a bit more effective. So I wanted to let you know about that. Uh, now we can press Command T to bring up our transform panel. And let's just move this maybe down to the left here, just beneath our moon. So something right around here. OK, let's press Enter and let's make a copy of this layer. We're going to move this one off to the right side. OK, and now let's go ahead and add layer mask to both of these layers. And just using a soft round brush, let's go around the edges here, just kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm actually going to speed up this section here because it's going to take me some time to just experiment with this and move them around to the places that I want and get the look that I'm going for. So I'll be back with you in just a second. All 
All right, so as you can see here, I just pretty much left these images towards the bottom of the sky. We're gonna fill the remainder of that with some other images. And before we continue, I just wanna give you a quick heads up and a nice little tip that you can find a lot of these really nice, high quality space images on NASA's gallery library. So if you just Google NASA gallery, it'll probably be the first thing that comes up and just feel free to search there. It's free to public domain. And they have so many cool images that'll look great for composition. So I highly recommend you checking that out. All right, let's go ahead and continue. And the next thing we're gonna do is let's just bring in another picture. So let's turn this one on here and we're gonna drag this up to the very top. And let's move this up a little bit here. And I like this diagonal line going on here. And I wanna place this right behind our moon. All right, now we can go up to that little check mark, click that, and we're gonna add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to that image. And we're gonna play around with the both the hue and saturation to see if we can find something that matches our other layers that we've been working with. So something there. And now let's click on our original image and add a layer mask. We're gonna invert that layer mask by pressing Command I, and we're gonna paint white on this just to bring back some of this. It can also look cool too if you're using a cloud brush and painting this back in, but I'm just sticking with a soft round brush at the moment. And I'm just gonna take my time going around here, bringing some of this back in, also playing around with uh, different levels of opacity just to help blend everything in nicely. And this is gonna take me a little bit of time, so I'm just gonna continue to do this. I'll be back with you shortly. So I'm satisfied with this. We're gonna bring in our next image and let's drag this up to the top. Command T and let's drag this up here. Somewhere right there. Let's scale it up a bit as well. All right, and we're gonna repeat the same steps like before. Let's add the hue and saturation adjustment layer. And again, just playing around with these to something that we like. Okay, that looks good. Let's add a layer mask and then Command I to invert it. And we're just gonna paint some of this back in again. So the process itself is very easy and very repetitive. The hard part is, is just the experimentation and trial and error just to get it to something that looks good and something that, you know, fits with your vision. All right, I'm gonna group these together. And what I'm gonna do now is just drag these below our other images to see if maybe it looks better beneath one of these instead of being at the top. So we'll leave it here. And now we can go ahead and continue making little adjustments here and there. And I'm just switching back and forth between uh, white and black to either paint some away or bringing some back in. Okay, so time to bring in another image and we're gonna drag this up to the top and maybe just slide this image down just a bit here. And we're gonna go back to our hue and saturation adjustment layer. And I think I'm gonna find something maybe a little bit like a washed out uh, maroon. This looks nice. Yeah, okay. And for this one, we're gonna put it into a screen blend mode. And then I wanna highlight both of these layers and let's just start dragging these down to see what looks good. So maybe I'll do just one more. Yeah, I'll leave it right here. I think this looks really good. And let's group these together. We're gonna group some of these other ones as well just to kind of keep ourselves organized and looking neat. And you know what? I think I'm actually gonna go back up one. So let's drag this up here. Okay, and we can add a layer mask and paint some of this away. And as we're doing this, you can see that it's actually starting to come along pretty well. It's starting to look pretty whimsical and I like the direction that we're headed in. So let's just keep doing this and building it up and taking it little by little. And I've changed my mind again, so I'm gonna bring this back down once more. And we can turn on our next image here, and let's move this up to the left a little bit, right around here by our moon. And I already like the color to this, so all we're gonna do is just add a layer mask, invert it, and then paint it back in. And the only real purpose of this image was just to incorporate a little bit more purplish tones to the sky on the left side there, right by the moon. All right, let's drag this up one, and we're gonna turn this other group back on. And let's just kind of do some adjusting here, maybe erase some of this so it's not so bright. There we go. I want it to be a bit more of a subtle effect. 
Okay, maybe erase just a little bit more. All right, our sky is actually looking really good. I want to focus on our moon now, and let's do some adjustments with that. All right, so let's go into that group, and let's add a layer below. And using white at 100% opacity, I'm just going to give one little touch right here, just a, a little glow. And then I've added another layer on top of that. And this one, we're just going right around the edges here, also at 100% opacity to kind of brighten up those edges and create some highlights. Okay, now let's go into the moon's layer mask, use a hard brush tip, and I'm going to erase some of this black edge here. It just doesn't look really nice. So I'm going to quickly do that. All right, that looks much better. Let's go back to our previous layer and back to the soft round brush. And we're going to continue to bring back those highlights, also back at 100% opacity, just taking our time, working around the edges here. All right, let's actually duplicate this layer by pressing Command J. And on the layer mask here, I'm just going to erase this little spot right here. Okay, and then I'm actually going to go back to the left side here and just erase some of this down as well. Okay, let's now go ahead and introduce a color balance adjustment layer, throw it on top. And we're going to bring in some color here. So maybe just stick to a little bit of the cyans, maybe a little bit of magenta and some blue. That should do the trick. We're now going to add a layer on top and let's start bringing in some more highlights. Anytime I do any sort of glow work, I like to have highlights both on layers on top and beneath the subject that I'm working on. I just feel like the quality is the best when I do it this way. Okay, let's add another layer on top of this. And this one's going to be a bit more uh, for just a color overlay and glow so that way we don't have those really dark spots on our moon. So let's touch up some of this area here. Let's now go ahead and actually clip this to the layer below and we'll give it a quick name. And from here, we're going to go to the top and put it into an overlay blend mode. And we can actually add another layer on top of this, clip it below, and then again, just do a little bit more color overlay on the edges here. So that looks pretty good. And we'll give it a title. I now want to add one more layer beneath our moon layer, and we're going to find a really light blue to use. And we're just going to paint one more ring just around the edge here, just to again enhance this glowing effect. Yeah, I really like this, guys. All right, this is going to actually go ahead and conclude video number two uh, for this series. Please be sure to check back in again tomorrow so you can see how we wrap up this composition and add all of those final effects. For tomorrow's video, we're going to do the majority of our color grading, blending all of our objects together and making them match and really fit into the scene. And we're going to add some more atmosphere effects as well. I think you're going to love how this turns out. Um, thanks again for checking in and watching this video. Like always, if you like this video, please go ahead and click that like button. Click the subscribe button as well as the bell so you can stay notified for our future videos. Tomorrow is going to be our final video of the 30 days of Photoshop. You don't want to miss it. Take care, everyone.